I've been doing pretty interesting automation lately for one of my products and I decided to record a quick video about the Python script that I made specifically for finding out the email address for the target user that you want uh, with their first name, last name and the potential domain name that they work for. Uh, for example, in my case, that will be my first name, some letter of the last name and the domain name that I have for my email address. And that script essentially is going to check each individual combination of email address that I might potentially have. And based on the SMTP request protocols information, here you can see uh, this email address gave me 250 status code, which actually represents my M email address. Uh, this is very generic way of implementing the email address checking and it's not working for all types of SMTP servers. This particular example that we are going to discuss mostly works for Microsoft Exchange server and the Google G Suite servers. So if there is some custom server, like for example, if you try to do the Elon Musk email address with x.com, you will see that pretty much all email addresses is going to return 250 status code from the SMTP protocol because they probably have the security safeguards around the response. And of course, it might be that they have a, a bit different email server configuration that won't handle all of those SMTP requests. But in today's example, it's just simple Python script that handles the SMTP server requests and response and we can essentially check whether that specific SMTP server configured under the domain name has an email address that we want to connect. So for the beginning, we just have the all of the important imports uh, for having this application up and running. So we have regex, uh, system, socket, SMTP lib, which is a standard library for connecting to SMTP servers and that we are going to use for a base SMTP connection. We don't need any extra libraries because that's a direct connection. And of course, we have a DNS resolver which will give us a configured MX server representing an actual SMTP protocol server underlining that domain name. So first of all, we are going to col collect the first name, last name and domain name. As you can see, it's easier when we have it also available as a system arguments. So that way we can just directly use that from our CLI input and not wait for the user input itself. So that's why we give a priority there. It is also important to have these safeguards in place for checking an actual name uh, regex for not sending junk string information to underlying SMTP servers. So we make sure that at least the things that we input from our terminal and use for our use cases, they are proper strings for email addresses and the actual domain names that we want to uh, resolve. So essentially we just go over all of the input parameters make sure that we have all of them available with the regex checks. We just print out things that doesn't match our regular expression and make sure that user gets an actual uh, notification message in the terminal. The important part here is this formats of having email address checks. So this is essentially a list of possible combinations with the first name, last name and the domain name. This list could be expanded, of course. Current implementation just handles a, a very basic combination of first name, last name without actually considering if there is a possible way of user might have the number 
between the first name last name or any other combination beside that this list but of course depending on your use case and the target domain name this list might be expanded and it will just take more time to go over each of the combination to check whether the domain name has that underlying email address or not but this list essentially represents all of the possible variants that we were checking with this uh, terminal input output first name last name uh, and the domain name itself the interesting part about checking the domain name existence is of course lying inside the SMTP protocol itself so first of all we have to get the MX records for the domain name which is of course representation of underlying Google workspaces SMTP server URL or Microsoft Exchange MX record host name so if I do here a print of an actual MX record and exit because I d I'm not interested in uh, going over entire code base and just try to run the same command with my information here you can see that the you can see that the underlying SMTP server here is this Google G Suite uh, SMTP server which is generated by Google and it is part of the domain verification when you add that to your DNS records so it is public information nothing really secret there every single email exchange server or every single email client has access to those MX record information so we can connect that to that server freely using standard SMTP library with the proper information there so with the SMTP server connect we essentially establish a TCP connection with an actual MX uh, record server that we have here using standard port of 25 which is the standard port for SMTP server so to initiate first handshake we are sending the hello message for SMTP server and of course the second parameter is going to be uh, uh, setting up specific mail that we are sending from and the recipient email that we are sending to so as you can see it is the same email address in both cases and on the second stage when we are trying to send to the target uh, email address that we gave the SMTP server itself will give back as a response whether this email address exists or not or the underlying message could be sent or not and that information lies in status code which should be 250 if the underlying SMTP server has the email address to demonstrate this how the row example works I'm gonna use the telnet and that telnet is going to access to port 25 uh, of the underlying SMTP server as you can see that connection went through and we got connected to that uh, Google SMTP server on port 25 now when we try to send the hello message we will get back a response of course like now the hello itself doesn't have a specific command so we don't need any uh, particular information there so this proves of, of point of having an actual SMTP row connection to a target server which sends the from and to email addresses the hello message which get back some kind of response with a status code that we can assure that this email address exists but of course it doesn't work for all kind of SMTP servers because most of the SMTP servers might have their own variation of handling those kind of requests and it's not standardized across all of 
the SMTP servers itself. So they can receive messages, but still they might not respond with the proper response code, whether that email address exists or not. So at last, we are just running all of those as a standard way of executing this specific Python script, meaning that we will get all of the email lists uh, and we will verify that email list exists or not using this verify function where we actually send an SMTP connection uh, using the MX record itself and then return a valid email addresses just to print out the specific error message or the success message uh, that we have for the terminal. Interestingly, this script actually works the same way as with the custom domains, but also works fine with the Gmail domain itself. For example, if I will type my first name, last name and gmail.com, it will start resolving an actual people that have this combination of Gmails and most of them are correct because Gmail also has this same SMTP server as it does with the Google workspaces. Of course, they are, are like completely in different tiers, but the underlying API is the same and we are able to resolve Gmail addresses as well. So this simple script actually can be used in the automation way of providing, for example, list of uh, customers, their domain names, and resolving their potential email addresses. I'll say probably 40 to 60 percent of the time you will be able to resolve email addresses using this simple Python script. So make sure to subscribe to this channel to find out more hacks like this.